I'm the COVID kid, the delicious Nickalicious, and you're back on the cream spot. I'm here with my favorite co-host of all time in all generations and all portals of existence of mankind. Rob Dog, hey guys, what's going on? Hey Rob Diggity Dingle Dog, how you doing, friend? Man, I'm great. We are about four feet apart. I'd say yep. three point seven five feet apart. Breaking the rules still. Here's my thing right now. We're edgy, man. I've saved so much money not eating out that I can just die rich right now. That's kind of I have too, but I've been making up for it the past like couple of weeks. It's been it's been rough. I like it. I like it a lot. I'm gonna turn you up a little bit. Yep, I was gonna just say that. Turn it up, turn it up. Yeah. Okay. We are we are really happy to be here with you guys here. Trying to get your mind off the virus, off all the nasty stuff. I think uh one of Oh man. That Uh-oh. Can, I knocked the power out on these computers earlier, and ever since I've turned them back on, because we never turn them off, they're just trying to do updates from 1999. I heard uh, the one logged into AOL over there. <laughs> yeah, I think I saw that, too. It's fine. It's trying to take its Y2K updates. And if you still have an AOL email, you probably have puffy nipples, too, so I want you to stop listening to this fucking podcast, because I'm sick of all you people attacking me about the puffy nipple stuff. Yep. I don't, I'm really sick and tired of defending myself. I don't like something, I don't like it, and you guys are going to change my fucking goddamn mind about it. So <laughs> He's he's pretty hell-bent on that, <laughs> that idea, so don't even try. <laughs> Let me see here. We had some weird emails this week, Rob Talk. Hey, I'm, yeah, I we, saw a couple of them come through. But we solicited... Um, we talked dick wipers. About yeah, dick wipers. Yeah, dick wipers. And we had a lot of people that that reached out. And I mean, that's uh, if you didn't hear that last episode, but we talked about it. It was pretty self-explanatory. Women sit down, use the restroom, wipe their vaginas. Guys usually don't, but some do. I we asked if, if there's any guys out there that wipe their penises. Yeah, and they after came they out. urinate. This is from our friend Rocky. We're not He's, talking about burping it. We're talking about no, peeing. I burp it all the time. I'm talking about wiping your dick hole after you pee, which is <laughs> really man, weird. Ultimate alpha move, if you ask me personally. I guess so. This one's from Rocky. He says, I do, in fact, give the old yogurt spitter a bit of a dab, but only after I poo. I confess my pee paw can't be tucked under the seat because it's inverted, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to dribble on the seat while I was while I wipe. So I give the hungry, hungry, aggressively average hippo a pat on the head before wiping. In all seriousness, I do squeeze it out like a toothpaste tube and pat dry before my wife and I wrestle, so the process is as sanitary as possible. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. That frighteningly makes a lot of sense. Thank yep. you, Rocky, for that admission. Yeah, thank you. Next from Alex, our friend Alex S. He says, hey there, gentlemen, just listening to the newest episode, the subject of does guys wipe after taking a piss? Well, I be one of those guys. <laughs> I like to give it a couple more I uh, more in shakes, but not three as playing with itself, as I like to take a bit of toilet paper, fold it in half, and give my fellow a few dabs. I love your podcast, been listening for a long time, and enjoy how you both bring us fascinating stories and joyful laughs keep up the amazing work up the work guys i never follow that three shake rule i just shake it until it's you know not leaking anymore <laughs> well my uncle taught me this to be, what you do is you grab it like you're about to start a boy scout fire with a stick and you twist it back and forth until oh, okay once you can get the it's some guys have it some guys don't but you shake it enough you get a white substance to come out Mm -hmm. and that's like a it's like your body's natural it's like windex your body Ah. produces it and it cleans everything out and it keeps it really nice okay so that's what i do every time i pee i just work up to the white stuff rodney sullivan says hey guys in response to your most recent episode i am a fully grown man do indeed wipe my deck after pissing and yes he spelled it deck (laughs) gotta dry the drip tip if the falls it's leaking (laughs) that's so true ha 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 covid cheers from new Newfoundland, Canada. Thank you guys so much for your emails in reference to dabbing your dicks after you piss. Here all this time, I didn't think there were people out there that actually did that. No, that's awesome, though. Hygiene. That's really nice hygiene. Wash your hands, dab your dick, you know. Rocky said he gives it a real vigorous scrub before he goes down with his wife. That just sounds painful, though. I don't know how... that, That skin just inside the dick hole, that's some different skin. Oof, yes, that it looks is. It's like shiny latex. When yeah. you touch that stuff, it hurts. It's scary. I, I just, I feel like if you pinch it really hard and then you shape it like shake it like a floppy, mm-hmm. you're good. You don't need to wipe it. Yeah. I don't even bother wiping my ass anymore. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm set my ways, Rob. You I'm know like how an hard old, it is to get toilet paper right now? I'm like an old fucking beagle. Yeah. Just, 
<laughs> There's no sense in it. Almost dead. I drag my ass across the carpet like I've got worms. Like I'm going to reach the 14th year of my life and I'm about to pass away. Yeah, you can always find carpet shampoo. You can't find toilet paper anywhere. Is, I, mean, I think it's coming back. I think you yeah, kind of get it now. It is. We got a, you can see it back there in the corner, an economy sack of uh, Costco. Mm-hmm. That shit's like wiping your ass with fucking plywood. And that's what I've been using for about three days now. And I lay there like a, like I've been sexually assaulted and I cry in the bath, the the floor of the shower after I use that stuff because it'll make you bleed out. It's like, I feel like a peasant when I wipe my ass with toilet paper. <laughs> That stuff feels like you're using the claw of a fucking hammer. I want to wipe your fucking butt with that stuff. So Costco, uh, whoever owns Costco, Brett Michaels, uh, yeah. Gene Simmons, whoever owns Costco, you guys need up your toilet paper game because that stuff, that, what's that, uh, Kirkland brand stuff? That stuff will split you in half, buddy. <laughs> you know, fill out a, do a rape kit after you use that fucking shit. Make your ass crack a couple inches deeper. Yeah. No worse than what you did to me. Uh, we got some hey, new hey. Patreon subscribers. Woo. Amanda Castro, thank you for your Patreon pledge. Love your oil. Uh, Louise Donovan, thank you very much. Love your oil. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Jake Schaefer. Jake Schaefer, thank you for your Patreon pledge, Mr. Shape Schaefer. Shape Shifter. Kayla Hutton, thank you very much. Aaron Brzezinski Shipley. Aaron, thank you for ha- for your having an amazingly complicated name that I hopefully did not fuck up. <laughs> this uh, this can't be a real name. Buck Clay. Buck Clay. We're supposed to chat with him today. We were supposed to have a video message thing with him, but some people I don't know if they're using fake names or not. So then when I try and find him to hook up with him for a video chat, yeah, that sounds. Buck Clay sounds like it would be the name of the guy that with three teeth that was married to Joe Exotic. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I am I am fully on board with getting that man out of jail. Oh man. I Oh yeah. I'm getting him out. Uh, he's got I heard he's got the Rona. I heard that he's in quarantine because someone he was close to got the corona. He doesn't personally have oh, it. Okay. He's just quarantined. I did hear also that the prison guards are showing him all the memes. <laughs> That's not possible. Yeah. Unless they print them out or something. They can't have cell phones in there. The the prison guards are showing on their phones, Joe. The memes. Were you guys allowed to have phones in your... Uh-huh. Really? Yep. Oh, no way. No, not at my institution. <laughs> really? No way, Jose. We weren't supposed to have them out, but they didn't make us, like, check them in or anything. Oh, yeah. No, we weren't allowed to have them, because then you sell them to the inmates. You, the cell phone and prison system, it's worth about $1,500. On, uh, I mean, a, a guard could get $1,500 for a for a an iPhone, essentially. <laughs> Good thing I didn't for, know like, that. A, for an old, old one, you know. When I worked there, I had a, <laughs> I had a sidekick. That's how far back. Ooh, That's okay. how long ago it was. Sidekick. Was that T-Mobile? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was the shit, though. Al Lab- Lebel. Al Lebel. Al Lebel's lobbles, but he doesn't fall down. Thank you, buddy, for your Patreon pledge. Rocky Donovan. Thank you very much. He's, Good, sir. He's the piss dabber. Yeah, he is. And last but not least, we got Luis Lewis. Thank you, friend. Your profile picture is a picture of a fucking cat. We really like that. <laughs> Half of them are. I don't know. It's Defaults. weird. If you would like to join us on Patreon, go to www.xnxx.com. You can find Nick and Rob videos there at, uh, yeah, that's a porno website. No, go to patreon.com slash Brohio podcast. You can find us right there. I've got an article for you this week, Rob Dog. Sure. You know, the last episode... I farted really hard twice. Yeah, you did. And there was no backlash. So I, and that's kind of the way we do things around here. Things we're not sure about saying Mm -hmm. or things we're not necessarily sure about doing on the podcast. We do it and then we Uh, wait for the blowback. I didn't even hear anybody mention it. There was no blowback on that fart. (laughs) The only air from that fart was the hot air escaping my ass. Rolling up the the crack of your ass. The quivers of my asshole. (laughs) Is is that, did I use that word correctly? I think so. I don't even know. (laughs) I've been in pirate mode ever since I watched that bitch ass WrestleMania. <laughs> Dude, it was this oh, man biggest steaming pile of shit ever. Yeah, it was so weird. The John Cena thing didn't really do it for me very much. Some people were like, "Oh my god!" I I thought it was cool, but it wasn't. I I mean, I automatically knew that Bray Wyatt was going to win. <sighs> but Dude, I didn't even know. But I I, I thought it was kind of cool, but I wasn't like over the over the moon about it. But the Undertaker thing was pretty fucking tight. Everyone said that the match between Bray and Cena didn't even really happen; that it was all inside John Cena's head. Hmm. It never really happened. I don't know. I don't know either. It's wrestling. Yeah. 
You never know. We have a man facing a felony for a total dick move. The okay. Wisconsin cop was trying to get an unruly suspect into the back of a Kenosha, Kenosha Police Department squad car around 2.30 a.m. Sorry. On Saturday, when the man, quote, grabbed Officer Prudhomme's pants in the crotch area with his hands, which were still handcuffed, according to a criminal complaint, in a flash, Prudhomme felt defendant Jerry Watkins' hand crushing down on his penis. Oh man. Mm-hmm. Watkins, <laughs> 30. He was 30 years old, so... I was still crushing dicks when I was 30 years old. Then, allegedly, quote, this is from the police report, tightened his grip, which caused a very sharp and very intense pain. Ouch. <laughs> this, is a, this is a big guy. He looks like a professional strong safety for the Patriots or something. He really does, He's yeah. a big guy. Watkins, he was cuffed behind his back, ignored the cop's demands to release his penis and was unmoved <laughs> by Prodom's, quote, arm strikes to the defendant's face in an effort to get him to let go. It was then that Prodom yelled for fellow officers to pepper spray Watkins, who police first encountered following a disturbance at a bar. Upon being sprayed, Watkins finally let go of Prodom's penis. <laughs> let go of my dick. Hey there, fella. <laughs> the officer sought treatment in what a pussy at a hospital emergency room after, quote, observing some discoloration to his oh penis. Oh, my gosh. Though a physician told Prodom that he, quote, did not observe any injury since there could be unobservable injury, the doctor suggested the cop follow up with a specialist. Hmm. Oh, man. The cop, this is the, he... This is from the dash cam. We don't have it, but they have, it says, quote, he's got my dick. Spray him. Spray him. He's got my dick. <laughs> it's a quote from the officer from the body cam. That sounds hot. <laughs> <laughs> you sent me that link. I'd fucking click on it. <laughs> right. Jesus. I'd pull out my dick right then and there. If there's anyone that wants to grab Rob Dog, run the dick. Send us an email. Podcast at gmail.com. Just not that hard, please. Not, well, this hard. I want you to squeeze it so hard that it becomes discolored, much oh. like this fellow's penis. Okay. Have you ever hurt your dick so bad that it turned colors? Not that it's turned colors, no. I have. I think I've told this before on here, but I was a young lad, and I jumped up on the counter to get something from the cabinet up on the wall because I wasn't tall enough to reach it. Mm-hmm. And then I went to, I had my knees on the top of the counter, and then I went to fall, like jump backwards and straight down. And then we have the cabinet doors below the counter that swing open. Right. And they had the, the handles that were like hooks. They were... It was just like a, a a bar that attached to the cabinet. So these bars went up and down, and the mm-hmm. top was a point. And then when I slid down off the counter, that point went straight up my dick sack and into my penis. Oh. And I went run into the bathroom screaming bloody murder. And I was oh. and I did not wish to have any assistance from anyone because it was my dick, and yeah. I didn't want to just show my dick off. Mm. But my mom came in there and looked at it. <sighs> I love her for doing that. <laughs> and she said, I don't even know what to do right here. And then she tried yeah. to send my dad in. My dad wouldn't even come in. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking jerk. I don't want to see the boy's dick. Flash forward two days, and that thing was purple. It looked like the eggplant. It was the size yeah. of an emoji on an uh, <laughs> iPhone. It looked like a little purple eggplant. It hurt, dude. It was so oh, I bet. miserable. So for those of you out there wondering if you can bruise your dick, um, you can. Yeah, I mean, I I've heard it before. You know, doing hard fucking and missing the hole. Oh yeah, I've and heard, hitting ass yeah. crack <laughs> instead of hitting a hole. What that guy say? <laughs> he was pissed. He's like, "Hey, a little lower there, buddy. We just met." <laughs> yeah, that shit sucks. Oh man, what a miserable time to be infected with a virus. Oh yeah, taco your penis. Yeah. There's nothing worse I can imagine the entire world. Yeah, I don't I don't want that at all. We have a Uber conspiracy coming to you for this episode. We haven't Yay. done uh, any dark deep secret government stuff in a long time, Rob. And I feel like this one kind of fits the mold. Apparently there is a television show on Netflix called Pine Gap, and okay. it's a fictitious representation of what's really going on at Pine Gap in Australia. And don't lo- don't leave me right away because you may be thinking to yourself, it's Australia. I don't really care about the deep, <laughs> deep dark government conspiracies in Australia. <laughs> what's so funny over there? Oh, nothing. <laughs> All 
All right. <laughs> Australia. I was watching a uh, video yesterday of Steve Irwin's son. Yeah. Slithering through the woods looking for an animal. He's like, we got to go right over here. And then he's like, we got to go over here. And it's done out of the, I can't believe it. So we're going to catch it in captivity. Blah, blah, blah. And he's chasing this animal. And then finally he zooms in on it and it's a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, they're so awesome. And he says, look right there. Look right there. Look right behind it. And there was a bottle of hand sanitizer. He's, they're great, man. They are great. Um, national treasures. National treasures, indeed. I I love Steve Irwin. Man. I did too. God, they're well, like our Bob Ross. What a fucking way to go out. Yeah, that is such a horrible way to go out. <laughs> it really is a stingray to the chest. Mm-hmm. We were petting stingrays of the aquarium a few weeks ago, and yeah. I would just the whole entire time I'm covering my tits and uh, <laughs> <laughs> these big old fatties. <laughs> I'm covering up these napples. <laughs> I don't know if these things jump. <laughs> I ain't taking no chances. Can't see feet underneath there. And then after watching the Tiger King stuff, and I just really want to start a fucking, uh, <laughs> I want to start a stingray sanctuary is my life calling. I, I get it. I want to do that. Now for, uh, like I said, don't, don't, don't leave me here. Okay. okay. Pine Gap I is never. a secret dark government base in Australia filled full of American people. Okay. So you're getting a big old juicy American conspiracy tied in with a big old juicy Australian conspiracy, all right? Beautiful. The Nautilus Institute for Security and Sustainability. I got this from their website here. Um, isn't Nautilus like a workout machine? It is. Okay. Well, this one's not a workout machine. This is an uh-huh. institute of security and sustainability. Okay. And they describe Pine Gap. It's approximately 18 kil- kilometers, kilometres. What is, what the fuck is a kilometra? <laughs> we know you weirdos like to measure in Col- the metric system. Colom- kilometers. <laughs> Isn't that the, what, that's what I look at on my car when I think I want to pretend I'm going really fast. I yeah, look at the, like twice I look at the kilometres to make sure that uh, the kilometres we don't use metric shit here in America. No, we don't. And my work is a German facility, is a German place, mm-hmm. and we use meters and metric and shit like that. And one day I had to, I had to install a new piece of electrical equipment. They had to go a certain height, and there was a guy from Austria there, and he was super anal. He didn't want anybody doing anything besides him, and I did it without his permission. <laughs> and he said, how high did you put it? And I said, I put it 12 inches high. And he said, Phew. And the paperwork said 12 inches. I don't know why it said 12 inches, okay. because none of the paperwork ever says right. it's always metric. Yeah. And he said, what do, I, uh, what do you mean, 12 inches? I said, it said 12 inches. I put it up 12 inches. He said, what the fuck is that in millimeters? <laughs> I said, I don't, I don't know, pal. He said, you work for a fucking German company? No, no, you put in 12 inches. To, do, not, do not know about millimeters. <laughs> I will never make this mistake ever again. Sorry, buddy. The dude smelled like a hot bucket of ball cheese. He always stunk. Apparently, oh, yeah. they don't wear deodorant in Austria. So if I <laughs> ever come into contact with Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'm keeping my social distance because nine out of ten chances, he probably smells like some hot Fremunda cheese, and I'm not dealing with that. This dude fucking I wouldn't want st- to either. stunk. I saw him bend over once. And he still had like he had brown stains at the top of his ass crack. Which- <laughs> Hell yes. Good for him. <laughs> I'm preparing myself for the COVID outbreak. Do you know, I need to understand what's coming to America? <laughs> 12 inches. The only 12 inches you know about is the dick you put in your ass. <laughs> That's what he said to me. He got fired for that. <laughs> they say about approximately 18 kilometers or 11 miles southwest of the town of Alice Springs, Northern Territory, in the center of Australia, which is jointly operated by Australia and the United States. Since 1988, Pine Gap has been officially called... The Joint Defense Facility Pine Gap. Okay. You have me at joint. Really subtle name, hiding a lot of shit right there. Pine Gap is perhaps the most important United States intelligence facility outside of the U.S. because it plays a vital role in the collection of a very wide range of signals intelligence. That sounds really Hmm. fucking boring, Mm -hmm. right? (laughs) Right. Providing early warning ballistic missile launches, targeting, targeting of nuclear weapons, providing battlefield intelligence data for United States Armed Forces, Operating in Afghanistan and elsewhere, it used to be Iraq, but critically supporting United States and Japanese missile defense, supporting arms control verification, and contributing targeting data to United States drone attacks. Oh, that sounds like a mouthful of shit that no one cares about. (laughs) So let's start to talk about the stuff that ever. Well, it's interesting to note that the talks, this 
this joint defense facility between mm-hmm. the U.S. and Australia was a treaty. And it doesn't make sense to me and it doesn't make sense to anyone else why America and Australia would have to engage in a treaty. But the te- the pretenses of this treaty is that these were all secretive talks. But why would you have to do a peace treaty with one of the most peaceful countries in the entire world in Australia? It's a good question. And it's a very good question. And it leads many to believe that the reason this treaty was kind of pushed, pulled together is to utilize a veil of secrecy so they didn't have to necessarily come out and say exactly what Pine Gap was being used for. Okay. Now let's go into the uh, the history of let's, Pine Gap real let's quick go. here. Sure. During the heart of the Cold War, which if you're not familiar with the Cold War, it was a giant pissing contest between America and Russia to see who had the smallest dick and whoever would piss on the other one first. The Cold War, I don't even know why they call it a war. It, it, well, they call it the Cold War. Because nothing fucking happened. (laughs) It was freezing fucking cold. Yeah. There was a joint treaty, and this is going back again, between the U.S. and Australia that called for a U.S. satellite surveillance facility in the outback, which they would call the Joint Defense Space Research Facility is what it was initially called. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now it's called the Joint Defense Facility Pine Gap, but when they first formed it, it was called the Joint Defense Space Research Facility. Let's put a space research facility in Australia. For what? <laughs> Who knows? Quick access to kangaroos, <laughs> to roos. Drop bears. Drop drop bears. Whatever, whatever it is. A didgeridoo. Oh, yeah. Vegemite. Vegemite. Have you ever had Vegemite? I have not. What the fuck is it? It scares me. Your wife's awake. She just sent me a snap because I snapped her 12 hours ago. <laughs> she's messaging me right now. <laughs> Rob just sat down. He's like, oh, she's still sleeping, bro. <laughs> Might want to ch- check her pulse. <laughs> it's 8 p.m. She is. She's uh, <laughs> not working right now, so she has a really crazy sleep schedule. It's all right. <laughs> I dig it. Last the garden, dig it. It was initially believed that this place was for strictly space research And 400 U.S. employees, yes, this place is in Australia, and it's a space research facility. Nice. 400 U.S. employees were immediately moved there. The Cold War ended around 1991, and this facility has been shifted into what, and it's shifted as to what it does now, I guess you you, you could say, allegedly. They've shifted shifted their focus to the war on terrorism. In 1999, the Australian government, so... 21 years ago, the Australian government refused to give information to the Australian Senate about Pine Gap Hmm. to the point that the Australian Senate had to call a professor from. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. The Senate wanted to know about the terms of the treaty and just what the fuck was going on at the joint facility. (laughs) The Australian government refused to give information about the facility to the point that the Australian Senate had to bring in a professor from the Australian National University to outline what he thought was going on there at the facility because they couldn't nail down what was going on. They had to bring in this super scientist to ask him what he thought to was, assume to what he thought was going on there. That's how secretive this facility was. And this was a pretty uh, famous scientist. Uh, I shouldn't say famous. He was a very world-renowned scientist. That, as far as scientists go. As far as science. He's not no Sheldon fucking Cooper or anything like that, <laughs> but he was a pretty well-known scientist. But according to this professor, since signing the peace treaty, the facility itself had grown from two antennas. I've got two antennas. i got two vehicles out there. I've got two antennas. Yeah. To about 18 antennas in 1999. And we're not talking about the antennas on the back of your car or whenever you dress your dick up like a mosquito. We're talking about (laughs) big, giant satellite antennas. Biggins. (laughs) Big, big ones. Biggins. The amount of employees has jumped from 400 when it first opened to around... So there's a lot of varying accounts here most of the research I found said there's around 800 employees, but then there's a lot of research that says that there's well over 1,500 approaching 2,000 employees at this uh, Pine Gap defense facility. Hmm. These are mostly, and all these employees employees are mostly CIA and National Reconnaissance Office employees. 
and oh God, it gets fucking weirdo. This the code name for this project of this joint defense facility was initially called uh, Merino M E R I N O, and he was wonderful in Ace Ventura. Dan Marino was <laughs> so it's only fitting that they name a defense facility yeah. after him because he would just shred defenses when he was playing for the Miami Dolphins and never won a Super Bowl no. because he's not... That boggles my mind that he never won a Super Bowl. That's, he was a good dude. Fuck yeah, he was really good. The other day I, I just, for whatever reason I got on YouTube and I looked up Joe Montana and Dan Marino uh, highlights. I don't remember watching them play when I was a kid about... Mm-hmm. I really got into football. I remember Troy Aikman, right. uh, Steve Young, Steve Young, but John Elway. Yeah. These guys are a little bit before us. And I was watching their highlights. God damn, man. Those dudes were some badasses. Oh, yeah. Those, those are some. Those dudes could sling the ball. Fucking Brett Favre was a beast. He was amazing to watch. Peyton yeah. Manning. I'm glad we got to watch him. From oh, yeah. Beginning to end. This professor went on to describe the facility as the ground control and processing station for geosynchronous satellites engaged in signals intelligence collection outlining four categories of signals collection, uh, collected. There's telemetry from advanced weapons development, such as ballistic missiles used for arm control verification. And this is what this guy assumes. He presumes this is what this facility is being used for. They're also collecting data from uh, signals for anti-missile and anti-aircraft radars, transmissions intended for communication satellites, and microwave emissions, such as long-distance telephone calls. And for all we know, they really could be just like sitting there measuring the length of a gnat's dick. Which wouldn't be that big of a deal for me. I feel yeah. like that would be something I would be good at. <laughs> right? I feel like that's something we need to know. I'm looking for something a little bit bigger than a gnat, maybe a full-grown man. You want to be a, bring a bunch of, bring those fellows that stand to the back of the couch where, who's the little, uh, the white female adult star, Piper or something where she's, got, yeah. she's got all the Mandingo standing yeah. behind her. <laughs> Let me measure all that. Give me something to do besides Nat dicks. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Sometimes, well, I've never told you this before, but I have a, that specific scene and I have your face nice. pasted over hers. That's sweet. Anytime I get really sad. I cover your face up and I masturbate to those guys behind the couch. (laughs) That's flattering. Flattering. Since the end of the Cold War, the station has mainly been used to intercept and record weapons and communication from Asian countries, China, North Korea, all those wonderful places over there that fucking hate us that are supposed to be our allies. Oh, yeah. And that's just allegedly what they're doing now, is monitoring the communications between the satellites and da da da, and they use all these big words, microwave emissions, long distance, all this. It's a fucking. It's to hide some shit. Okay, they have a black curtain over what's really going on there, and uh, that's what we're going to speculate in this episode. That's what we're going to determine. We're going to get down to the truth. There's going to be no questions left at the end of this episode. We're going to know exactly what the fuck is going on there. To kind of set the stage here for some of the wackiness going on at this base, the base itself is covered in randoms, and some of you are probably wondering, what is a random, and how many could Rob Dog fit in his asshole? Well, they're giant bulbs. <laughs> Thirteen, that's the answer. <laughs> they're domes. They're domospheres. They're giant white bubbles that they put over top of the antennas. So they're okay. They're like a lot more technically technologically advanced than just a regular antenna, but they have these randoms all over the place at this Pine Gap facility. What exactly are these randoms for? I can't really say. Some speculate that there's a nuclear, some type of nuclear facility below Pine Gap that go along with all of the special visitors that have been seen in the area. If you get what I'm saying in the direction I'm going, I'm if you it. feel me, I do. In 2011, the UK Ministry of Defense released 8,500 pages of files revealing 8,500 pages worth of UFO sightings and abduct, abduction stories yes. direct, directly related to the Pine Gap Defense Facility. Edward Snowden, hmm. here we go, the biggest whistleblower in American <coughs> history, God leaked bless him. all of that information, and Pine Gap was one of the major players in the information that he leaked. Nice. One of his claims was the Pine Gap facility is the hub of the NSA and their constant monitoring of the world's citizens. Hmm. Even the location of Pine Gap is said to be such 
that many signals can be monitored while at the same time out sig- outside signals do not get in. Nice. Okay. Which leads me to believe that would be the only reason that they would have to set up a facility like this in Alice Springs, Australia, of all places, on the other side. You couldn't be any further away from America than fucking Australia, okay? That's pretty true. That's got to be at least a two or three hour boat ride to get there. I'm not sure exactly the logistics on that one. Yeah, yeah. But it's... In terms of increments of time, when my children ask how long it'll take to get there, I use... You know, it'll take six episodes of Dora the Explorer to get there. That's what I tell them. And this would probably take at least six episodes of Dora. I would think so, yeah. Maybe even a couple Dora movies. <sighs> but the the lid... Did you listen to the episode of Joe Rogan with Edward Snowden on yeah, it? Yeah, I did. I found... I, it dragged so bad. That guy is so fucking smart that he talks above all of us. That he makes no sense... He makes sense... But it's so boring how smart he is. <laughs> I just want him to break down and be like, and then one day uh, I was had access to the top admiral's keyboard. And I, I peed in it. I peed all on his keyboard. <laughs> and then when I was done peeing in it, I put it in the freezer. So then all the pee freed in the freezing the keyboard. And then he we called him piss knuckles for, from then on out whenever he would touch his keyboard. Yeah, it was it was highly political, which I, you know. It was lo- it was losing me in that aspect. But. Yeah, we don't do that here, bro. Ohio, we don't care about politics. Hell no, politicking. But he did release a lot of good information as far as oh, yeah. the NSA, what they are monitoring, how they're uh, unlawfully monitoring all of us. There's so much data that the government gathers from. For instance, right now, if you're an Android user, and I've I've said this before, you can go to just Google My Activity. Google My Activity. And if you log in with your email address there, if you have a Gmail and you use an Android phone, it literally has in a timeline every single fucking time you touch your cell phone, every single time you hold it up and you say, Google, find me the closest place to get my asshole cleaned up. <laughs> All these things it lists all that and keeps it in chronological order. And there's timelines where your Google maps, you tap on the top left hand uh, menu of your Google maps. And it says timeline literally every fucking day. It tells it has it where you've gone, how long you were there. Even if you're going places, you're not supposed to go. It still has it on. There. It has the activity. I'm hopefully not getting anybody's spouse in trouble right now, <laughs> but that you can turn all these things off. Mm-hmm. You can, you can say quit watching my fucking activity, Google, but then all of your access to Google doesn't work anymore. For instance, if you have the Google speakers in your house or Google Chromecast, those things won't fucking work anymore because you turned off the, their access to your activity. Got to pick your battles there. My friends, <laughs> Just fucking don't go places you're not supposed to and <laughs> don't go. look at shit. And another thing I've seen, even when you go into in, in incognito mode, mm-hmm. this shit, they had a there for a while. If you would say go into incognito and you type something in the top, mm-hmm. it would still it wouldn't say all the websites you went to, but it would still record your search terms. So if you would say huge uh, gay black dicks, you Google that. Not that I've ever Googled that. Not that you've ever Googled that. I am not speaking for either one of us. <laughs> Gay black dick. Turtle <laughs> turtle fellatio, for instance. Okay, there you go. Whatever you look up, the search term will go into the history, but not the web pages. So if you, for instance, look up turtle porn and you click on a turtle soup recipe, it's going to look like you were looking at turtle porn. So that argument <laughs> doesn't hold up very well. If you try, if... You get caught by your spouse looking up turtle porn, and you say, look, I was looking up turtle soup recipes. <laughs> it's not going to record a, you clicking on the recipes. It's just going to record the search term. I feel like it's a conversation everybody has, at least yeah. once or twice. <laughs> she knows I love Ninja Turtles, so stuff like that popping up, she's not completely taken aback by it. <laughs> she's just like, cowabunga, dude. You right. know, you do you. Let's get some pizza. Let's hop on the skateboard. I mean, everybody knows that Raphael and April O'Neil had a thing. April O'Neil was briefly... My girlfriend when I was about six years old. <laughs> Briefly. Okay. And I, she looks like Master Splinter with her pants off. 
Ah. If you didn't know that. That explains a lot. It does explain a lot. Okay. Now, what the fuck is a, ra- is a radome? A radome? A radome is a structural weatherproof enclosure that protects a radar antenna. The radome is constructed of material that minimally attenuates the electromagnetic signal transmitted or received by the antenna, effectively transparent to radio waves. Radomes protect the antenna from weather and conceal antenna electronic equipment from view. They also protect nearby personnel from being accidentally struck by quickly rotating antennas. So there's a... Okay. There's, these radomes are all over the place because we're not hiding anything there. Hell we're no. We're just fucking doing shit. We're doing shit. There's a lot of these reporters, and I saw there was an interview that Vice did, but of a lot of these um, journalists go into Alice Springs. And they attempt to interview because a lot, a lot of people in Alice Springs do work for Pine Gap. Mm-hmm. And there's this ongoing joke amongst all the journalists and people that go there and do research. When you ask these people where they work or what they do, everyone in the city, village, town of Alice Springs, whatever it is, I know, <clears throat> I don't know what the fuck it is, but they all say they're gardeners. There's, they just all say, oh, I'm a gardener. Well, no one can afford to <laughs> fucking live. Right off a gardener's salary. Yeah, yeah, not that many gardeners, and it's like if everybody in Dayton was a bus driver, it yeah. wouldn't it Very wouldn't true. work, you know. So there's this ongoing gag and gif. Um, it, it, this weird, all these weird people that work at Pine Gap. They say they're gardeners. Whatever the huh. fuck that means. You think they would? They change it up a little bit. Maybe they grow weed. <laughs> but that that's not a b- huge secret. I don't. I think we, weed. Um, is marijuana legal in <laughs> Australia? Uh, in a first for Australia, the capital legalizes recreational marijuana. So it's kind of hit and miss. Yeah, like it it's here. much like it is here. But I think marijuana is not not nearly what it was before. I know it's not legal here in Dayton, but the the uh, the Dayton Police Department said, "All right, we're done fucking with it." They passed yeah. that that ordinance. They're just not going to fuck with it anymore. Yeah. So, I don't think I don't think they're marijuana growers. <laughs> they're not marijuana gardeners. Oh, yeah. Uh God. It sounds classy though. I do have this reoccurring nightmare of having sex with a garden gnome, though. I'm not even joking with you right now. I the not really having sex. Okay. <laughs> But I have a reoccurring nightmare that I'm being attacked by garden gnomes, and I'm not necessarily like, afraid of garden gnomes. Are they the small ones, or like are they full size in the dream? Only one time. <laughs> I'm not even making this shit up. I'm either. like reading into this. Like I want to know. Not, and only one time in the, all of these dreams I've had with these stupid fucking garden gnomes has there ever been one that's my size. Okay. And of course, in a dream or a nightmare, when you try and punch something, yeah, you can't do shit. It's like you got 50 million pound concrete blocks in your right. fist and you can't punch anything. And he's just like, but they're Rocky Balboa. All, yeah, all they are, dude. <laughs> yeah. The one that I get, the one, the last one I fought with, he'd been sitting on the porch doing push ups, <laughs> waiting for me all fucking day. He was a big, he was a big boy. He was a big boy. And, uh, <laughs> not, and it all started, what's the, oh, God. It's a movie my kids watch. It had Elton John. He was one of the voices in it. It was, a. Uh, it was about the gnome, R- Gnomeo and Juliet. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. And ever since I watched that, I had a nightmare that night. And then every once in a while, <laughs> I have a weird fucking nightmare about garden gnomes. And, dude. Uh, That's so funny. A few, this has been a few months back, I had a nightmare about the garden gnomes. I went outside in the dark, <laughs> and one fucking, they were, like, chase, running up from the yard trying to attack me and shit. Mm-hmm. And I always try and kick him when I always miss and fall and then I'm like on my back and I wake up or whatever. But I had the nightmare and they're, you know, chasing me and stuff. But I wake up and I go to leave for work and I walk out the front door and I swear to do- I swear to God, dude, the fucking king dingling raccoon was up in my <laughs> trash can out front and I opened up the front door and I could hear this mother. I could hear this dude in the trash can mm-hmm. and I saw him lunge out of the trash can and like go back towards the sewer I was so scared for my fucking life. I, my life has never been in such peril and jeopardy as it was in that moment. This fucking raccoon, he didn't even run back the street. He, like, like stood up, put his wallet back in his pocket, and just started walking back towards the street. Like, hey, man, f- trash is weak tonight. This is a big motherfucker. But this is right after I had that nightmare. 
and I was scared. I sat in the car with fucking chest pains for about seven <laughs> minutes before I left for work, all because of this goddamn shit. Do you associate raccoons with lawn gnomes now? No, I don't. <laughs> okay. But we have trash pandas out here all over the place oh, just yeah. fucking yeah. our shit up, man. They're bad. They will lift the lid off the trash can and be like, nope, not tonight, and they'll put yep. it back down and leave. There's yep. some bad... There's some bad raccoons out Oh, here. dude, in my old house, they were really bad. Yeah, they're really powerful. Yeah, yeah, they are. Powerful animals. Mm-hmm. Oh, so one of the... Uh, let's go into the earliest incidents of question here at... Uh, I keep on wanting to call it Alice Springs. Pine Gap. Pine Gap facility here. While carrying out work for the Australian, Australian government in early 1973, a cartographer... Which I think that's someone who makes maps. Yes, I do remember. Yep. I learned that in uh, What's Cooking in high school. Cartographer. Cartographer. Would have (laughs) one of the earliest recorded strange experiences connected to Pine Gap. It was shortly after midnight when an intense vertical shaft. Yeah. So it's already turning fucking gay on us right here. (laughs) Um. It was shortly after midnight when an intense vertical shaft of blue light lit up in front of him, obviously coming from inside the grounds of Pine Gap Base. Going against his better instincts, he slowly moved his vehicle closer to the base. Upon arriving as close as he dared, he could hardly believe the sight before him. About 300 metres, or 1,000 feet from the ground, a large, gleaming disc hovered over the base. Yes. As he watched, another beam of blue light came from the UFO and toward the ground. So you're not fucking around now. You're calling it a UFO. It came towards the ground where several radomes, radomes, weatherproof housing that protect radar antennas, were situated. A few moments of silence followed the light ceasing before another light beam appeared again. This time, from the radomes to the craft above, the situation repeated for around 30 minutes before the disc began to spin quicker and quicker. In a flash, it shot into the sky and was gone. Huh, okay. Weird. And when we talked to Ray Shemansky from... He was the senior scientist from Wright Patterson Air Force Base, if you want to go back yeah. and listen to that. Episode. I think that was like back in like October or something. Yep. Yeah. He talked about we theorized he theorized with us. He said a lot of the UFOs that come to this planet, I said, what are their infatuation with nuclear facilities? And there's been a lot of rumblings that there's perhaps a nuclear facility below uh Pine Gap. And mm-hmm. he said that this is their this is our biggest threat to them are UFOs or uh, our biggest threat to UFOs is our nuclear power. And that's why the aliens, the fucking wrecks and the crashes and the Roswells, all that shit started to throw show up around the time of world war two. When we really started to fuck with nuclear energy, nuclear bombs and nuclear everything. And they kind of go, and there's so many different recorded incidents of UFOs. The one in Montana that we're, it's an episode I think we should cover that he talked about where there was these nuclear silos and these UFOs just showed up and shut the motherfuckers down, which had never happened before in the history of these silos. They just show up and these nuclear silos just shut down. There's so many different safety mechanisms to stop these things from completely going down but these ufos hovered over the base and completely shut these nuclear silos down so that would be the intentions of possibly seeing a ufo around the area of pine gap if they do have an alleged nuclear facility somewhere underneath the base or if they're hiding a nuclear facility there if that's even what these radomes are they're not antennas if they i mean if they are somehow linked to the I guess the nuclear system of that facility. I don't know how I'm not a fucking scientist, bro. <laughs> I just like to theorize about stuff. Yeah. I I'm feel just you. trying to get abducted and feel the greenest three inches I've ever felt shoved up inside my guts. I'm willing to take one for the team too. I hope. Uh, yeah, I if probably it, would. I mean, they got to take us as a package deal though. <laughs> A package deal. They take my pants off and be like, no package. <laughs> <laughs> and this one doesn't have a package. <laughs> one thing that Rob and I completely understand right now is there are things going on in the world that are interfering with our happiness. There's even things that are possibly preventing us from achieving our goals. 
Our friends at BetterHelp Online Counseling are there to help you. With a safe and private online environment, it's never been more convenient. Their professional counselors are ready to connect with you right now. If you've been going back and forth about reaching out to a therapist, the time has never been better than right now. At BetterHelp, you can do it on your own time at your own pace. You can do chat sessions, text sessions, video sessions, many different ways to connect with their therapists and counselors. They have many different professional counselors specializing in areas such as depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, sleeping, trauma, anger, family conflicts, LGBT matters, grief, and self-esteem. Anything that you need help with, BetterHelp can help you. And anything that you share is completely confidential. If you're not happy with your counselor for any reason, you can request a new one at any time for no additional charge. 3,000 U.S. licensed therapists across all 50 states are available on BetterHelp. And it doesn't matter where you're at in the world because BetterHelp is available worldwide. They are available to communicate in four different modes, text, chat, phone, or video, and you can start communicating in under 24 hours. BetterHelp is available on desktop, mobile web, Android, and iOS apps. You can schedule video and phone sessions weekly, or your therapist may ask you to go more than once per week. They do offer financial assistance and financial aid for those who qualify. It's safe, it's convenient, and best of all, it is truly affordable. And to make it even more affordable for you, the listeners of the Brohio podcast can get 10% off your first month. All you have to use is discount code BROHIO, that's B-R-O-H-I-O, So go to betterhelp.com slash brohio. All you have to do is simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with a counselor you'll love. That's betterhelp.com slash brohio. As we all know, sports all across the world has come to a screeching halt. We've got basketball. It's been benched. Pitchers are taken off the mound. I had tickets to see my opening day, Cincinnati Reds. It didn't happen. But our friends at MyBucky are here to save the day. They're going to keep you sane. They're going to keep you entertained with access to your favorite games like blackjack, roulette, slots, war, you know, that's the easy game, and much, much more. It doesn't matter whether you're out on the front lines or quarantined at home. The fun doesn't have to come to an end with my bookie. And you may be like Nicolicious. Video poker, not quite my thing, but my bookie has me covered. They've got a host of live casino dealers online. That's right. They have professional dealers at their tables, live, on site, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And your favorite squad might be sidelined right now from all the craziness going on in the world. Well, don't sweat it. My Boogie has partnered with some of the leading esports brands to bring you wagers on virtual action straight from the court in NBA 2K20. Plus, you can always do your part to make your bankroll great again by taking advantage of shifting odds on political bets. The industry leading my bookie, they're reliable, upright, and best of all, they pay you fast when you win. All you have to do is visit mybookie.ag and use the promo code BROHIO for a 150% bonus on your first casino deposit. That's promo code BROHIO to receive a 150% cash, C-A-S-H, cash money bonus on your first deposit. And you can claim those extra funds all the way up to $750. Don't forget to use the promo code BROHIO to activate this very special offer. That's promo code BROHIO. You spin, you win, you get paid at mybookie.ag. Okay. In 1975, just two years later after that incident, uh, while flying a private plane near Pine Gap's airspace, the pilot and the several passengers on board were all interested to get a sneaky look at the strange activities in the relatively new and secretive facility. Hence, all had their attention toward the base, and they were not disappointed. Out of nowhere, a large white object appeared to take off from the base below them at absolute breakneck speed. I don't know how fast that is, but that's exceptionally fast, probably. To break your neck? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Almost as soon as the witnesses focused their eyes on the bizarre object, it had vanished in the sky above them. The plane continued on its journey 
and upon landing, the pilot made a report of the sighting. Both the pilot and all the passengers were asked to wait for investigators to take further details of their encounter. So these guys are these people are supposed to show up and kind of take reports about what these people had potentially seen. So they're getting debriefed. They're right getting off, debriefed. Right off the bat. They're getting their underwear taken right off. What'd you see? I'm going to debrief you. You ever had <laughs> you ever had your dick sucked born <laughs> Australian before? I promise you it's not like we had you used to. I wonder if we're the only country in the world that does fellatio. If in other countries they don't even suck each other's dicks. They might not. There had to be there had to have been a moment in time where someone said, I would like to suck on that thing you pee out of. <laughs> and I would have liked to have been a fly on the wall or a fly on the mud hut whenever that happened, just to be there for the first blowjob in the history of mankind. Let me suck on that thing you pee out of. <laughs> The oh, first, man. it was probably like Harlem in 1972 <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> I don't even know when it happened, dude. Oh my gosh. We don't fucking care about the history of mankind. <laughs> we the just want to know when the first blowjob was. We care about stuff like that. <laughs> or if, it, I bet it was really, it was either really, really bad, like someone would just started chewing on it, like, <laughs> oh God. And I think it'd feel if I just chewed on your dick. <laughs> and then someone like you or me is like, hey, can you f- just... Not try, not not try it with your teeth for a second. Just, just try it like it's not, like it doesn't taste good for a second. Use more uvula. <laughs> I'd love to have been a fly on the mud hut for that one. Oh man, that would have been so awkward. <laughs> or like eating ass, for instance. There, I right. believe that's happened in the past two years. I don't think any. <laughs> if you've had your ass eaten before two years ago. It's def- no. this definitely the resurgence. Don't send us an email. My wife will intercept those. She'll be very <laughs> upset about that. She'll be asking what kind of fucking questions I'm asking on here. But I feel like the ass eating has started in the past couple of years. And that's definitely... Things get boring. You, you're tired of eating ass? Let's eat some bats. And that's where all this shit came from, man. man that's such a good question. People eating ass. I just want to know about the first blowjob. Yeah. If you were the person to receive the first blowjob in the history of time, <laughs> do send us an email. We're podcast at gmail.com. Let us know how that was, what it felt like, if there was a lot of teeth involved, if it was angry, if it was mean. I bet it didn't feel good, Rob. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, would think, I wouldn't think so. If you got your asshole eaten back in the 90s, send me a Facebook message and let me know. I'm trying to hook up. <laughs> My ass needs eating so bad. <laughs> I'm positive that person probably would not pass an HIV test. <laughs> probably not. Positive. 90s were a crazy uh, time. Absolutely. So they, they're getting debriefed. They're getting their briefs removed by these uh, investigators there at Pine Gap. Good times. And they allegedly told the witnesses that they were not to talk about what they saw and to essentially forget the incident mm. altogether. That's, that's typically how this goes. God. You come to me and break galaxy defenders. People like it when I sing in this podcast. That's a vibe, man. They really like when I sing um, Jesus music and Disney show tunes. <laughs> so just keep that in mind anytime you want me to sing, Rob. That's hey. what the people enjoy. I'm all about it, man. Someone wrote us on Twitter this week and asked what the guitar chords were for the opening of the episode and i said don't you fucking worry about it i I didn't say anything because i didn't fucking know yeah uh i'd have to go back and look i'm pretty sure it's in you don't know it's either in c sharp or c standard and you can figure it out from there there you go c sharp c standard so it was channing tatum that wrote us um that wanted to know so i can i can figure it out okay yeah there was another incident in 1984. Um, let me, let me, let me. Okay, in in 1984, perhaps because of the nature of their work in the Australian government, the five witnesses of a 1984 encounter at Pine Gap preferred to tell the incident anonymously, which I completely understand that. The leader of the group had been receiving increasingly increasing reports of UFO sightings in the skies over Pine Gap in the weeks leading up to the encounter. One message, however, was more mysterious than the rest. It advised that, quote, something big was going to happen at Pine Gap in the upcoming days. The dates given remain a mystery again in the, in the interest of protecting the men's identity. 
Acting on this news, the five men split themselves into two groups and using two vehicles, they approach the base from different positions. Once there, they essentially kept a stake out of the grounds. All right, so these okay. guys are fucking bout about it. Hell yeah, they are. For the first th- three days, <laughs> that's a lot of beef jerky. Ooh. That's a that's a lot of that's a lot of root jerky. Really ostrich jerky? I think so. Maybe kangaroo. I, th- I think yeah. They have cows over there. I'm sure they do. I don't know. Hi, I'm Johnny Knoxville. There was <laughs> didn't he fist a cow once? Yeah, he did. <laughs> okay, just making sure. For the first three days, there was no activity of any kind. On the fourth night, however, that changed. Several large military vehicles began ferrying large yes. groups of workers in coveralls to the large radomes on the base. <sighs> Jesus. As this was taking place, a pillar of light suddenly shot upward from the ground to the sky. A strange cloud was forming high above around the pillar when it vanished Five strange craft were making their way to the base. Four diamond-shaped, unidentified flying objects and one of a cigar shape. <laughs> it's a big dick. <laughs> <laughs> it's a stogie. <laughs> Once they were over the base, the pillar of light <laughs> appeared again, this time from the craft above to the grounds below. Hmm. This went on for several minutes, all while the strange cloud above continued to form. In a moment, the five craft had vanished. Ooh. There is some serious fuck shit going on Hell yeah. at Pine Gap, and people can't tell me otherwise. I want to believe that they're trying to, and that's what I said, they're using this veil, this black curtain, to try and say, we're monitoring radio tra- satellite transmissions. Maybe it's just boomerangs. No, it's fucking aliens. Oh, okay. You've got one on your shirt. You I should do. know that this is not... Maybe an alien boomerang? I just want to go over there. I don't, I, don't, I don't know anyone in Alice Springs. My only run-in with Alice Springs, I used to live, when I was 18, I bought a house, and uh-huh. I lived with our friend Roy. Yeah. Roy worked at Outback Steakhouse, which is the most authentic Australian cuisine yeah. no that we rules. can get our fucking hands on. No rules, snowshoes. Right. I don't know. <laughs> no rules, just right. <laughs> that's, that's, that's right. I said no shoes. <laughs> no you, dicks. You go up in there with no shoes, you're going to get fucking arrested. <laughs> <laughs> but people would order carry out and then they would never pick it up at the end of the night roy would come through like bring out your dad and he would get this <laughs> leftover food he would bring it to me hell yeah and he would offer it as a like a like a peace offering because right. he knew a, i was a loud obnoxious and i he knew if he just gave me styrofoam containers full <laughs> of food that i would go to my room and i would leave him alone yeah and he would always bring me steak and uh, pasta all kinds of stuff and then one night he brought me, uh, he said, all they had was Alice Springs chicken. I was like, what the fuck is that? And I flip it up. It's just like grilled chicken. Uh-huh. And um, it was weird because the the ticket for the <laughs> chicken was still on the bottom. <laughs> and it, that was never the case. They never had the, he never had the, like the receipt or the ticket still stuck on there. And I didn't look at it very much, but I ate this chicken and I was like, God damn, this is fucking terrible. It was just, <laughs> I think it was just grilled chicken. Yeah. Pretty much. And um, I ate about three quarters of it, and I said, fuck this. And I got out of my room, and I went to Roy in the living room. I said, this is fucking disgusting. <laughs> and he looked at me and said, it's f- it's free carryout that no one picked up. What the fuck do you want me to do? And I'm just like, you know, try harder next time, Roy. <laughs> he brought you free food, and you went to him and bitched. <laughs> Such an asshole. <laughs> about two hours after I ate this Alice Springs chicken, it was still laying next to my bed. I didn't even throw it away. My stomach's like, <laughs> <laughs> I started singing the songs of my people. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm going to get sick. And I ran to the bathroom. I vomited. I left a trail of vomit from my bedroom all the way to the toilet. And I, nice. got, and I got maybe one-tenth of my vomit in the toilet. <laughs> I, had, I cleaned up my mess, and I laid back down, and then it just kept on coming. Oh, dude. man. Pounding me. Sick, sick, sick. And um, I finally like, pick up the leftover chicken. I'm like, I'm going to fucking burn this shit. And I go to take it to the trash can. I look at the ticket. This fucking shit was three days old. Oh my gosh. Right? Three day old. It was, it was like warm when I ate it. And I said, Roy, what the fuck? What are you doing to me, man? And he's like, I don't, I don't it was just sitting there, man. It's just something nobody picked up. And I said, like, yeah, three days ago, so you're trying to fucking kill me, dude. <laughs> you literally <laughs> try to take my life. 
And that's why our relationship, we moved in together with the pretense we were going to fuck each other. And we knew that it was never going to go beyond that because he tried to kill me with Alice Springs chicken. So that's my only association with Alice Springs. So, so you're going to have a bone to pick with them and their right. chicken. It was boneless chicken, so I don't have much of a bone to pick. I I'm but sure. I'm deeply upset about how disgustingly <laughs> ill I grew over that chicken. cock a doodle do. And it's crazy, man. Whenever you eat um, a certain food, when you get sick off a certain food, oh, yeah, you, fucks you up, man. never want to eat it again. Yeah. Same thing with drinks. I can't drink Jaeger because of that. Oh, yeah. I had a chicken melt from Waffle House one time, completely loaded my girlfriend's dad's car. He was driving a small Hyundai. Ooh. Floorboards had three inches of my vomit oh, in the man, back. That's rough. <laughs> and all I said was like with chunky peanut, like <laughs> mouthful of corn and peanuts. I was just like, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all I can say to him. That's all I can say to him. Man, that's like the most helpless situation possibly. Oh, I was 15. I didn't yeah. just embarrassed to the gills, dude. Yeah, that's awful. Just ladling vomit out of the back of his car. Ladling. <laughs> I live through it. Porridge. Me and him just became Facebook friends this week, too. That's pretty exciting. Nice. Like, hey, remember that time I yeah. threw up in your Hyundai? Hey, buddy, I know you got a f- full coverage on that thing. You totaled it out after I puked in the back seat. That's how fat I am. <laughs> oh, man. Now let's move on to one of the most, uh, this is kind of, this leads into one of the most popular encounters that uh, has ever occurred at Pine Gap. But in a 1980 incident, two two Northern Territory police officers were part of a search operation for a missing child. Oh, okay. Hopefully they found him. They were covering the area alongside the Pine Gap facility when suddenly, oh, suddenly, a door that was previously camouflaged opened in front of them. Amazed. They watched as several objects with a, quote, bathtub shape left the doorway and made their way calmly across the base. You've got flying fucking bathtub and (laughs) camouflage doors, Rob. You guys smell that fucking bat over there? (laughs) Jeez. Jeez. Me, Charles Chatson. <laughs> Even more unbelievable, a dark hole appeared from nowhere in the hills that surrounded the facility. The, the strange objects entered this opening before it, and they disappeared. By the time the two officers had focused their attention back on the doorway, it was nowhere to be seen. Although both officers would speak of their sightings to researchers, it remains a mystery as to what they actually saw. And we flash forward a decade later in 1989. Perhaps one of the most well-known encounters at Pine Gap is that of three men returning home from an all-night fucking uh, an all-night <laughs> hunting trip. It was around 4:30 a.m. on December 22nd, 1989. Man, a lot of cocaine and AIDS. Yeah. <laughs> when, when the three hunters noticed a quote hidden door camouflaged Sweet. in the natural surrounding terrain open before them, so That's these crazy. guys saw the camouflage door ten years prior. These guys come along 10, 10 years later, and it's camouflaged into the terrain now. So nice. Pine Gap got a little smarter. That's it's, pretty sweet, though, man. I, it, oh, shit. If you saw a hidden door in the middle of nowhere, would you go oh, into Just it? like uh, into the mountain? Yeah. Well, fuck no, I wouldn't go in there. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Man, I, I think they're I like, would. like, hey, we got some oatmeal raisin cookies in here, fat boy. <laughs> and then I would, okay, I'd take off running, man. <laughs> got my J's on. Man, I think I would do it. From behind the door emerged a metallic gray disc. The object moved without sound, hovering for a moment over the base. As the three shocked young men looked on, the disc suddenly shot upward at a lightning pace. In a moment, it was gone. As they gathered their thoughts, they would witness the camouflage door moving back into place, shutting shutting tight as if it was never there. Oh, man. They saw the fucking door shut. Uh, the three men would tell their account to a local university professor who, in turn, would t- uh, forward a report to UFO researcher John Lear, vouching for the witnesses as, quote, reliable but reluctant to discuss what they saw. This is like something off the show Lost. Ooh. It's very, uh, very profound. There's a, just a lot of and there's a lot of alternate theories about shit going on here. Mm-hmm. For instance, this is associated with a, a, a stock market crash. Okay. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Dr. Gilly, Gilly, Gilly writes that several times locals have seen white discs about 30 feet in diameter being unloaded from large U.S. cargo planes at the airports serving Pine Gap 
with a United States Air Force emblem on them. Conveniently, the white discs were a lot smaller than the black discs. <laughs> I don't get it, dude. I don't know what you're trying to fucking say. I don't either. All right. (laughs) It seems likely that discs are assembled and based at Pine Gap because many discs seen at night would confirm this. Much furniture has been delivered by plane from the United States. The locals also say that an enormous amount of food is stocked in warehouses of what could well be a true multi-leveled underground city. Nice. Dr. Gilly writes further that shares put on the market at the same time will cause a stock market crash of such magnitude that all national economies of the West will collapse at the same time. Cash will be worthless, and the risks of a global confrontation, which are planned, will be completely will be very high. The purpose of Pine Gap and the other underground bases purpose will become obvious. If a global confrontation is going to break out, those bases will serve as a place of safety for the politicians and their staff, as well as the international financiers their families, and their friends. Hmm. So this Even guy, their friends, nice. Yeah. I'm who I'm a friend of no one rich. Because <laughs> I would try and get them to invest in prestige worldwide. First and foremost. Wide, wide, wide. Wide, wide, wide. wide. Bomb it down the fairway, bitches. <laughs> All right. We're going to get a little sticky here. Can Black aliens... leather gloves. <laughs> we put liquid paper on a bee. It died. It died. <laughs> Uh, the kids are playing in the backyard today, and I was sitting there like an old crazy fuck spraying bees with <laughs> pesticide. And Paisley kept on seeing the bubbles foam after it. She's like, oh, bubbles. I said, you don't want these bubbles. You don't want these bubbles, little girl. So next, we got, uh, I don't, uh, this portion of my research is titled Aliens Using Mind Control. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> uh, oh, man. An Australian newspaper. Australian newspaper. I didn't even think they had newspaper in Australia. There's uh, nothing that fucking happens there. You need a newspaper and you get didgeridoos. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good, right? Do you think they can, like, translate that sound? Like, is it like a... Uh, Kind of like speaking in tongues? Sounds like a fucking trap fart is what it is. <laughs> if you take your hand... Like, you're going to slap someone in the face, just uh-huh. hold it up, like you're going to slap someone in the face, and they use that flat spot, of your, flat spot of your hand, and you just really push it hard up against your butthole, <laughs> and you fart really hard into your open hand, it'll make the same sound as a dingery do or whatever the fuck you're <laughs> talking about. Dingery do? Yeah. It's like a butt harmonica. <laughs> Very much. A fart monica. I call my <laughs> my nickname for my asshole is a saxophone. <laughs> okay. Because you can put your mouth on it and blow into it. And it'll make beautiful sounds. <laughs> you Imagine the one just blowing into an asshole. <laughs> this is the stinkiest megaphone ever. You want to hear the fattest thing that ever happened to me this week? It echoes out your dick. <laughs> oh, that would make it probably work, dude. Like an elephant trunk. Science, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but what were you saying about what happened to you this week? Oh, okay. I got the seat mount on my bi- on my mountain bike, and me uh-huh. and Paisley go riding. Right, and we I took her for the first ride of the the nice weather. Mm-hmm. I aired up the tires before we went because it'd been hanging up in the garage. Yeah, and we went for a ride, and everything was fine. And I knew I aired up the tires too much because those bumps were really fucking like, busting my butthole. <laughs> yeah, they're throwing you up in the air. Yeah, and I got back. I'm like, all right, let's get off. So I get her off, and I lean the bike up against the wall in the garage, and I take like seven steps away from it, and then the tire, the back tire just goes. Holy shit. After I've been done riding the thing for like Man. a half an hour, and I'm just like, I gotta start drinking more water, eat more <laughs> salads. Cause I- Dude, at least that didn't happen when you were riding it. That would have been bad. Uh, when I say I rode it for half an hour, I got like maybe a half a block from the house <laughs> because there's a hill over here on one side yeah. of the block, and it really doesn't do my, well for me. <laughs> An Australian newspaper wrote in 1974 that U.S. had been carrying out research into electromagnetic propulsion, EMP, at Pine Gap since 1966, and that security about this project has resulted in hypnotic and post-hypnotic keys being implanted in personnel prior to the acceptance into this project. Ooh, motherfucking we. Nice. Once again, Dr. Geely writes that the Pine Gap employees working on this base, and especially those earmarked for duty on the EMP projects, have undergone brainwashing and even implantation of intracranial devices. 
Hell yeah. In her cranium. I think they're putting shit inside their fucking heads. That's what it is, man. Fritz Springmeier writes, oh, Fritz, (laughs) writes, the most powerful mind control is still trauma-based, which we've covered very uh, intensely on this podcast. Yes, we have. Uh, is trauma-based, built on a foundation of multiple personalities, which are disassociated personalities and parts of the mind. So they break your mind down so much that they can create a different, a whole different mind inside your mind. Oh, yeah. Scary shit. And they, with this tr- triggering trauma stuff they do, they can get you to become someone you're not w- just at the snap of a finger. Um, it appears that the... Electro, electronic mind control is being overlaid on top of this. The victim's consciousness is not able to think past the electronic mind control, which catches their undivided attention, being too distracted to deal with the deeper issues of trauma-based mind control. Instructions can enter someone's mind through their implant. Oh, God. At the NWO's major massive beast computer center in Alaska in the 1970s. <laughs> That's it. That's the one. Okay. An engineer who was in charge of building and getting the center operational revealed the site's capabilities. They also had one in South Africa and one Pine Gap. These three sites formed a triangle on the globe. Oh, man. And couldn't be located anywhere else due to the naturally occurring lines of force of the planet. And... My favorite thing about Pine Gap is they're seriously using interdimensional <laughs> fucking portals yes. for time traveling Mars soldiers. <laughs> so good. This is not something that we can achieve in this basement, Rob. No. We we tried water heater is about fifty years old. Only I portal know. we've opened up is my ass. <laughs> No, if you go back to the end of the last episode, we definitely opened my ass off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. But um, so in terms of these dimensional portals, one of the primary purposes of all of this is to destroy what comes through dimensional portals throughout the planet. Okay. Wherever dimensional portals seem to exist, so do Navy SEALs. Right. So they're using these portals. Just like Stranger Things. Oh, God, dude. And they station these Navy SEALs. At the portals. Why is it always Navy SEALs? I don't know. They got a fucking... They... What the fuck is the National Guard doing? <laughs> the National Guard? <laughs> I want to say Stacking like... bags of rice? <laughs> no. They're not. They're definitely not fighting people at dimensional portals. That's because all the National Guard are 600 pounds. Uh, the U.S. has access or control of the four prime Earth gravity focus points on the planet or dimensional portals. There's a portal at Pine Gap... Okay. Easter Island. Naturally. San Diego. Whale's Vagina. And Brookhaven Laboratories in New York, New Jersey area of the U.S. If I do believe, Dude. that's Montauk. Yeah. yeah. Or, or close. Somewhere. I wouldn't close. want to fuck with New Jersey if I was anything. It's, yeah. Those people are scary. They are scary. They're very scary. <clears throat> oh, man. There's also... God. This is <laughs> so crazy. Angela... Kalani also claims that U.S. and its partner, the U.K., control at least seven of the eight vertices of the dual tetrahedron. Is that what it is? Yeah. What the fuck is that? I Fuck, I don't know. That's a sweet-ass word. We're going to fucking find out real quick what this is. Tetrahedron. Tetrahedron. Marijuana legal in Australia. <laughs> tetrahedron. It's a shape. No, yeah, it's just a fucking triangle. It's Why a wouldn't three, they just... It's a three-dimensional triangle. Why wouldn't they just put... Let me read this. God, we're fucking stupid. <laughs> U.S. and its partner, the U.K., control at least seven of the eight vertices of the dual... Triangle. Triangle. <laughs> Three-dimensional triangle of Earth. It's like a pyramid. Yeah. And many of the secondary points in the grid at the halfway points. <laughs> Minworth Hill, U.K., listening station is exactly opposite Pine Gap, and like it, is free from electromagnetic interference, which okay. is necessary to manifest computerized time portals to Mars. Oh, man. Created by radio waves. I want to get in one of those. The NW Cape transmitter is Western Australia is exactly opposite the middle of the Bermuda Triangle. Okay. <sighs> Directly opposite. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the book Anti Gravity in the World in the World Grid has many maps on the dimensional portals. On page seventy nine, there's a map of Earth gravity force points. There are vortex points all over the globe, including Lopdor, <laughs> China, which have they have their space program. This is connected to Pine Gap military base and is marked 
by James Hurtak as a place where the E.T. Masters of Wisdom will arrive. And these are the fucking, and what they're talking about. They have these dimension, these portals at these different places. And Pine Gap is one of the places that has one of these large portals. And it's not just a portal, a time portal, or a, your, the, whatever you have a custom as a, a portal will be used for. This is a, a direct portal back and forth from Mars. This is like some, fucking something that Thanos would open up. Yeah. <clears throat> For sure. We're getting into the MCU now, man. This is fucking great. Yeah. I'm all about this. And this, these portals are specifically uh, passageways to and from Mars. Nowhere else, just to and from Mars. That's and then awesome. there's these elite fighting soldiers that America has engineered. So fucking cool. That goes in and out of these <laughs> portals that are keeping, and I believe there's t- and time is relative, and we've learned that from Albert Einstein. So <laughs> there is some time traveling going on when these guys do go back and forth from these portals. But the belief is these fucking super fighters that are going into these portals, i.e. the one at Pine Gap, when they go to Mars, they are fighting and keeping back whatever we don't want to come into this dimension. That's so awesome. (sighs) Kind of like people that have to watch the door at right Pat. Yes. Kill everything that comes out. You fucking kill that dog when it gets out of there. (laughs) That Demogorgon. Okay, and James Hurtak, he says these ETs, or Masters of Wisdom, will arrive in Massé along with Pine Gap, both being dimensional doorways. The map shows the vortex areas. One in particular is uh, South Africa, where there is another CIA run base connected to Pine Gap. And the Australasian ufologist Graham Stewart wrote, Harmonics of Wycliffe Well in the Devil's Marbles area. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Whatever you do, don't kick the devil in his marbles. The Devil's Marbles area. In it, he shows evidence that there is a major covert scientific operation to create space-time portals in Australia. Harmonic positions in a triangulate shape are linked from the Devil's Marbles area in Northern Territory. (laughs) Devil's Marbles. It's a mountain that looks like a giant ball sack. (laughs) It would be like a Jesus. It'd have to be just like a big like a uh, indention in the ground. <laughs> I don't even know, man. With, <laughs> so scared with bigger holes in the. You've left ever and seen right the side. Devil's Marble? Hold on, I'm gonna fucking Google this one real quick too. <laughs> Did I hope Sorry. it pulls up something inappropriate. I, I hope it's just a big old swinging cock, <laughs> a big old red nutsack. <laughs> uh, Devil's Marble. <laughs> <laughs> no way. God damn it. It's just two big ass rocks. It looks like the Devil's Marbles. <laughs> look it up, folks. Just Google Devil's oh, Marbles. That's so awesome. I think of the Devil. Those look like, like you said, Thanos balls. Yeah, the- for sure. <laughs> those are awesome. God. Good job, Devil. Yeah. So the harmonic positions in a triangulate shape are linked from the Devil's Marble area in Northern Territory to the Pine Gap facility, and again, the Parks Radio Telescope. So maybe the Pine Gap is kind of like the taint. I mean, the way they're writing about it in this research... That's like the devil's taint, and then the devil's marbles are his balls. Pine Gap has a really specific area on the map that allows it to do a lot of different... Like, geographically, allows it to achieve a lot of different stuff while staying off the map and not allowing a lot of stuff to come in. If that makes sense. (coughs) One-way portal. I guess. He wrote that it may be possible to physically observe a type of shimmer effect at certain times during the Earth's orbital motion around the sun in vortex areas. Okay. The matter-slash-antimatter harmonic for Devil's Marbles <laughs> is directly associated with matter transfer and time displacement. Hmm. Graham writes that the Devil's Marbles position, where a wave of UFO, UFO sightings were, all the harmonics values together could produce an interdimensional portal or yes. time-matter shift. So good. Are UFOs entering Earth through these time portals? He also wrote about a possible time portal in south of Cooktown, Black Mountain, Queensland, where unexplained phenomena, human disappearances, eerie sounds, and UFO activity occurred. We got a fucking nice. bookmark that shit. <laughs> Harmonics put this in a sympath- uh, sympathetic resonance with the energy grid as a whole. A particular... Oh, what the fuck is this guy talking about? <laughs> This stuff. See, I get really frustrated researching this stuff. Because <clears throat> um, you don't understand any of it? 
Yeah. <laughs> well, it's so... And I yeah. feel like they could just be making up big words to scare us. <laughs> that could be happening. It very well could be. There's, and I have a little snippet about a portal whistleblower right here. Okay, cool. As well. While it is widely accepted that various branches of U.S. intelligence operate out of Pine Gap, the presence of the CIA is often the one met with most suspicion. Perhaps the truly strangest conspiracy claims involving the CIA are those suggesting time travel experiments and super soldier programs that take place on Mars, no less. Many of these claims exist, and while they have to be treated with a very large pinch of salt, they are very interesting. The aforementioned Richard Souter claimed to have spoken with a whistleblower named Rich Hansen. According to Souter, Hansen not only was part of these ultra-secret programs, but he, quote, left for Mars military service from a time portal in Australia. <laughs> yes. While Souter didn't confirm the location to be Pine Gap, assuming for a moment there is some truth to these wild claims, the only likely location would be such a place. So good. I'm just really... I should have gotten high off marijuana before I did this episode. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Okay. Uh, fuck, this is a long story. <laughs> this is an abduction story from Bill Chalkner about um, some stuff that he dealt with. at Pine- Well, it's a story he learned about associated with Pine Gap. Okay. Well, while the water's running, I'm going to go take a piss. Okay. <laughs> All right. I can't hold it anymore. That's okay. I'll hold it for you if you'd like me to. Okay. Rob's back. He's done yeah. peeing, and the bath water has been turned off. It's above us. <laughs> it has. This story by Bill Chalkner. It says, One of the most bizarre and unbelievable stories I have come across involves a man who claims not only alien contact and abduction, but to have been taken aboard a UFO and flown into a base beneath Pine Gap. Okay, there we go where evidence of alien liaison between aliens and the military and government was occurring on a cosmic scale. Greg. What a fancy fucking name right there. (laughs) Hey, Greg. Hey, Gregor. Hey, big Gregor, as I will call him. Do you remember that kid we used to go to school with named Greg Grayley? Yeah. And he he hit a razor blade in his sock and tried to stab the shop teacher one day. I don't remember that, but I remember that kid. Oh, I was in there. And I said, you won't fucking do it, dude. And he said, I won't fucking do it. And then he... (laughs) It was a piece of shit. <laughs> the blade had shifted down underneath his foot. And he couldn't get to it. <laughs> what a fucking idiot. It was cutting him. It was <laughs> took his shoe off and his sock is covered in blood. <laughs> That's what he gets. And I said, uh, <laughs> you fucked up, dude. <laughs> I was tagging him on. This is before, like, whatever, school violence and shit like that. <laughs> All it was was a little razor blade. He wasn't going to do that much damage. And our shop teacher really needed a fucking haircut anyways. <laughs> dude, he was like the smelliest guy ever. Was. I cut his grass. He paid me handsomely to mow nice. his lawn. Yeah. Well, that's nice. Fantastic man. Greg, as I will call him, had a very strange story to tell me. The circumstances of it, of its telling were almost as strange as the details it contained. It is a story of alien nation in the sense that we were dealing with an individual caught up in a complex mil, mil, milieu of his own making. Why are they use uh. words I don't understand? With its basis either in fact or fiction. <clears throat> if true, albeit unlikely, we are dealing with an alien nation and alien liaison. This situation may have been more about the inner self of Greg than any alien reality, but I'll let you be the judge. On December 22nd, 1992, I received a call from a woman named Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I received a call from a woman. She indicated her 22 year old son, her 22 year old husband, Greg, had a big interest in UFOs, but that at an event that uh, had occurred the previous night had alarmed Greg. He reluctantly came to the phone and confirmed the story his wife had related, namely that he had seen two strange-looking men standing in the front yard of their, their country, uh, NSW, what is that? Uh, that's, I don't know. Their NSW home at about 8.45 p.m. I believe NSW is somewhere in Australia. Pretty sure. The weather was clear, but the men seemed to be wearing long, dark coats like raincoats. He turned to come inside, then found they had suddenly disappeared. (laughs) Okay. Strange story. The real reason for Greg's concern emerged slowly in the conversation that followed. He had not shared this with anyone, even his wife. These were not just, quote, men. They were men in black. Yes. 
a bizarre aspect of the fringe world of UFO paranoia, the sinister UFO silencers. They were watching him, it seems, because he was trying to break away from a near lifelong alien liaison. Sweet. Oh, God, Greg, you fucked up, buddy. (laughs) Way to go, buddy. They came into his life at a troubling time. At five, Greg's father had died. Some children have imaginary friends. Greg had his, quote, men in black. They were friendly, normal-looking human beings. They They appeared in numerous settings in his room at night, in the park to play, or in a pool. It was all innocuous stuff. Then later, as the relationship developed, the men began fingering him vigorously in his asshole. <laughs> Why did... No. That's a fun weekend. The men gave Greg a device, like a handheld computer device, that showed moving color scenes like a miniature TV. What the fuck, man? <laughs> this is allegedly in about the late 70s. When he was about 12, he started having the experience of finding himself in a strange room. He found he was on board a craft. He had no idea how he got there or how he got back. This happened a number of times where he wasn't aware of going and returning, only of being there on board UFO. Excuse me. He was escorted by a group of normal-looking human beings. Then the experiences started to change. The men in black would approach him like before and ask him to meet at certain rendezvous points. There, he would be driven to a bush setting. Oh, that's scary. Hmm, Okay. Where a craft would be on the ground. He would go on board and be taken on rides and shown things. At about 14, he had the first sense of them. That's in quotations. Other life forms on the UFOs other than the human beings, little aliens. It seemed he was being groomed for some uh, form of service. Ooh. Everything started to change, he claimed. The craft would then be actually going to secret bases. Greg told me, quote, I had their trust, but when I started realizing what sort of mistake I had made, when I had seen things being done, I wanted to get out. I don't know how to handle it. He found he was not alone in the sort of cultivated relationship. All right. He became aware of a number of people like himself who had seemed to be uh, to be participating as well in these, quote, alien adventures. Greg claimed that what alarmed him about his alien liaison relationship was what he saw going on at the secret bases he claims to have went to. He claims abductions were occurring. He described seeing people being subjected to cruel abduction procedures in the bases. He saw the beings involved as ultimately cruel and ruthless and began to fear for his own safety. His perception was that he was being evolved into a men in black type role. Sweet. His descriptions of activities and places vary from the elaborate to the vague. Greg described his first trip to the Pine Gap underground facility. It is both simple and exotic, perhaps the stuff of fantasy or alien nation. It was a uh, Pine Gap viewed on an image screen, not through windows. The screens hmm. would automatically switch off. The thing took over and would guide you through the actual opening at Pine Gap. It's a big it's like, opening. It's like Jurassic Park. It's much like the the camouflage doors they that we spoke about in the beginning. Yeah. The doors they would split. Two pieces would slide open. It's like you're traveling through a tube for about fifteen to thirty seconds before you actually come to the base itself. The actual complex had ships there the height almost of telegraph poles. The roofing system was much higher. In the base, there were men working on repairs, laboratories, glass houses, food storage, and other facilities. Greg claimed that it was his intention not to continue with this alien liaison relationship. He feared for his safety. That was the story that I unraveled from him. The the alleged men in black presence stepped up on Christmas, uh, Christmas Day, 1992, both Greg and his wife saw three men in the adjacent paddock at 8.45 p.m. They disappeared suddenly, leaving no trace of their presence. Greg's wife called again on December 28th in a state of panic. Greg had gone out into the backyard. As he returned, his wife saw what seemed to be a flash, an explosion, that seemingly knocked Greg off his feet and left behind a burning hole, Holy shit. which lasted 10 to 15 minutes. Photos were taken of the burning hole, which I have copies of. 
To Greg, the significance of this event was that they, quote, in quotations, were intimidating him into compliance and submission. When Greg and his wife holidayed at a location near Sydney, I took the opportunity in company with friend and psychologist Dick Warburton <laughs> okay, <laughs> to, meet, to meet with the couple. We wanted to see if this was the stuff of fantasy or delusion. Greg's wife had not been made privy to the alien liaison material, but was clearly supportive of him. Dick and I were in a quandary. Greg did not seem to have had exposure to the kind of UFO literature and material which could have inspired this type of story. However, we were uncomfortable with the dynamics of the situation and the bizarre and elaborate tale described. As we stopped at a service gas station on the outskirts of the town, our late return to Sydney, I wryly said to Dick, if there is any truth to this story, we might not make it back to Sydney. We did make it back to Sydney without incident. Perhaps that mirrors the perspective we should uh, hold on to this affair. I tried to keep in contact. I received a Christmas card from them for nineteen uh, from them in 1993. After that, there's been no further contact, and I have lost track of them. It would be easy for us to rationalize all of this as the product of storytelling on the part of Greg. We were near. We were never absolutely certain of the ultimate status of the affair except for the reality that there was not a shred of compelling evidence to back up the whole bizarre story. Hmm. That's very... Take it for what you will, then. Very, very strange. It's fun. I just really want to get touched by something. <laughs> I really want to get touched by something. I don't know if it's allergies, or if dust mites, or Costco is upset with me talking shit about their toilet paper. Something has infiltrated my eyeballs. Oh, man. And it feels like my retina is about to burn off and explode. I feel like I've been sucking on the devil's marbles. (laughs) 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 That's so much fun. The devil's marbles. The devil's marbles. So that was a a weird, twisty, turny tale right there. If you ever touched the devil's marbles, send us an email. Tell us about it. How'd they feel? Were they hairy? They were definitely... They were smooth? Those, the devil's marbles are as smooth as my back. I have no back here. Lucky. At all. None. Lucky. Not a single one. I'm like a giant 300-pound banana. <laughs> I have no hair. <laughs> I'm patchy as fuck. <laughs> Hate it. Well, I hope you guys are finding yourselves in safe health. You guys are um, staying away from sick people. Yeah, definitely do that. When, it's, it's not a joke. Much love to our friends in New York, as the president and the CDC and all the important people have said that this is going to be the most hellacious week, hellacious next two weeks, possibly three weeks of this uh, of this virus. So good luck for those of you that it hasn't reached. That doesn't mean that it's not real. I know. I know it's hard. It's easy to be a skeptic about this stuff. You're saying I'm not sick, so it's not real. Well, people die from cancer every second of the day. You don't have cancer. That doesn't mean cancer isn't real. So the shit yeah. is happening. Use the social distancing. Enjoy the time with your family. Enjoy the time not work. Enjoy the time being unemployed with no money and just <laughs> having to worry about what you're going to pawn next to keep food on the table. Hey, that's what's being an adult's all about, right? Yeah. It's nothing new for us, you know? Just yeah. be poor and wonder where the next meal is going to come from. Yep. Just hope if you die, it strikes you quickly. <laughs> yeah. I hope not if you die from this. I really don't. But if you are directly affected by the uh, coronavirus, COVID-19, send us an email, brohiopodcast at gmail.com. I would love to know if any of our listeners have actually uh, been a f- sick with the coronavirus. Yeah, just stay six feet away from us and we're fine. Send us an email, brohiopodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to speak with someone that's actually has it, you know, maybe um, not necessarily tested positive for it, but you, you know, you're around someone that tested positive and you got sick too. So we'd love to speak to you about it, possibly do an interview so we can put some of this stuff to rest or, you know, raise awareness for stuff that people need to know. Sounds good to me. If you've ever been abducted and fucked by an alien, <laughs> we'd love for you to... And we're always looking for really weird stories. If you've had a um, <clears throat> any kind of story, if you've... It doesn't even have to be... I don't... 
we have enough ghost stories to last us until yeah, the cows right. come home. But if you've had instances of profound paranormal, uh, whether it be a, a beast, a, a Bigfoot, or... If you made love to a cat, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm right here, buddy. <laughs> uh, I love to, you know, even speak to someone about... Um, it's been pushed to the brink of death whether it's been uh that's pretty cool yeah found yourself in a murderous situation at the hands of someone and live to tell about it just a really really cool fucking stories or if you or someone you know has died but then came back that would be really cool yeah shocked back yeah let us know what you've seen <sighs> if you've seen anything yeah jesus show Je- jesus at the jebus jebus tell us what jebus really looks like Thank you so much for listening. Go to Apple Podcasts. Leave us a review. Yeah, do that, please. Someone left us a review this week that said, let me go to it really quick. Let me go to it really quick. <laughs> sure. It was a good one. Oh, okay. He said, this is from The Used, 5703. He said, the podcast is 100 times better than an over-the-pants hand job. <laughs> <laughs> Well, over the, over the pants yeah. hand job. Yeah, that's like middle school. Yeah, those are the worst. <laughs> you ever had Gene burn on your dick before? Oh, man, it's rough. Uh, the worst. Yeah. All right, thanks so much for tuning in, guys. <laughs> we'll catch up with you soon. Yeah, thank you guys so much. I love you. Love you, too. Bye, guys. <laughs>